Hello. I'm going to try to put you to sleep. My name is Loren. I'm doing my first, maybe my only, ASMR video to help you fall asleep. I'm just starting my YouTube channel. I do TikToks and Instagram reels and things like that. But I'm stretching. I'm gonna be doing podcasts, but you know what? I thought just to start out my channel, I had to do an ASMR because I have a special love for ASMR. I've been doing ASMR, not doing ASMR. I have been watching ASMR since before it had that name. Um, probably since 2006, there were whisper videos. Oh my gosh. What was that guy's name? Oh, I cannot remember. Whispering. Oh, he would walk through the woods and he was from, where was he from? Not New Zealand. Okay, I'm failing. I'm just gonna, wow, I'm looking at the moon right now and it looks so beautiful. Wow. The full moon looks amazing. My nails are absolutely out of control. They look like chicken claws. Don't mind that. Anyway, gosh, were you just ready for the most boring video of all time? Hey, I guess that is helpful when falling asleep. It's just hearing boring talking. Okay, so what I'm gonna do in this video is I had my an astrology birth chart personal analysis done um, by this beautiful woman. Oh my goodness, she's like so gorgeous. And she reads birth charts. I'll have her information here. And she does readings and I wanted to do one. So let me say something about astrology. I am, I'm spiritual. I am more uh, leaning towards Bible believing, but I think that anything can be a good thing and a bad thing. Nothing is purely, um, evil, nothing is purely, especially when it comes to things like tarot cards and astrology. I lean typically away from that stuff because it's very easy to get wrapped up, just like anything can be too addicting. Social media, for instance, can be used to grow your business or you could be so obsessed with it and be addicted to it that you scroll for hours a day and lose hours and hours of time. So anything can be good and bad um, when misused. And I think astrology can be a tool in learning about yourself. You take what is helpful to you and get rid of what is not helpful for you. Let's go through this. Sorry, my dog is running around. I am a Cancer, as it says, as we know, as I know. Um, she says, I'm happy to provide you with an astrological personality analysis. From my research, I really enjoyed getting to know you and all your personality traits. One thing to note is this not this may not be a hundred percent correct. We are people and we have free will and this is just a snapshot of what may of what your life may entail. I love getting to learn more about you and I must say cancer is one of the best sun signs to have. Have fun reading. So understand the houses but this beautiful woman Anna Logan 
Anna Logan breaks it down for you. Because I don't really know what the houses are, what they mean. But she breaks this down for you. If that's something that you're interested in, she's got your card. All right, my Cancer's son is in the sixth house. I can go ahead and tell you, you are a nurturer who gives unselfishly to anyone who needs you. You have a very strong desire to help others and serve, especially in work, health, and routines. So true. The sun represents where we, where we spend most of our energy, and this is located in the sixth house. So this tells me two things. One, you pay attention to your health. I'm a health coach, nutrition coach, nutritional coach. Uh, let's see. And are likely to be aware of the connection between emotional well-being and physical health. Yes, I am. And two, you might be interested in holistic health practices or nutrition. Interesting that this says that you are pretty sensitive to the well-being of those around you. You're very intuitive and can pick up on situations that others may not necessarily understand. Being a Cancer Sun means you may be a little sensitive and take things personally. Hmm. Maybe previously I used to be like that, but I am evolved now. I'm an evolved Cancer and oh, I don't take anything personally. Nothing is personal. And even if it is personal, it's their own problem. It can be hard sometimes to be productive with tasks if your emotional feelings have been triggered. Your intuition and emotional nature can also find expression in creative or artistic fields. I'm a hairdresser and used to be a painter, so definitely. I just love like petting you. I love videos like this, I'm not gonna lie. Like I love, I love gentle whispering. God, my nails are so hideous. <laughs> they are so creepy and claw-like. I hope this is somewhat relaxing even though I have the creepiest of nails right now. Okay. Your intuitive and emotional nature can also find expression in creative or artistic field, particularly those that involve helping others and contributing to the community. I think doing hair is very artistic, but it also contributes to people. And I love that about hair. My career is moving elsewhere, but I think I will always do hair. I'll always do hair. A job in healthcare wellness or nutrition may appeal to you. Your natural empathy and attention to detail make you well suited for roles like these. You seek emotional security and stability in your relationships, yes, and daily life. And I have no energy for anything else. <laughs> A stable, harmonious home and job environment are essential for your well-being. I definitely find this true, but um, lately, like, even if not everything is squared away, I've been just having, like, a peace, you know? God takes care of the birds in the air. They have a place to sleep and food to eat. And how much more important are we than birds to God? So, I don't worry. Pisces moon. I feel like I'm very Pisces, like... Even though I'm a Cancer, I definitely resonate with a lot of Pisces. So Pisces is in my first house. Let's see what this means. This is a very unique and powerful placement to have in my opinion. You are someone who has a strong and creative drive. This placement often inspires an artistic expression. This could be art, <laughs> artist, writing. I have written several books or any form of artistic creativity. You are someone who has a strong intuition others may not understand or like. <laughs> I added that part. You can be in a room full of people and instinctively know who is sad. Oh, oh, <laughs> that is true. And can I tell you a side story? When I would, in relationships, 
I would feel if my partner, there's been a couple partners that I've done this with where I felt that they've had a nasty, negative, angry thought and I could feel it like an explosion in the room. And I remember one time distinctly, I said, whatever you're thinking about, please stop thinking about that. Don't do that. And he was like, I was thinking about punching someone in the face. And I was like, yeah, I could tell. Like, not that I could tell, but I just felt this huge burst of energy. You really have to be careful with who you share your energy with because you're sharing, I got bleach on my shirt, so much more. If you're a woman, you need to be very careful who you're sharing your energy with because your body absorbs them. You become more like them. Anyway, you are someone who has a strong intuition others might not understand. You may be a yep, yep, yep. You can connect deeply to others because you're very empathetic. Almost too empathetic, not in that. Um, since your moon in your first, since you have your moon in your first house, you can, and I'm obsessed with the moon. Can I say, like when I see the moon, I almost stop dead in my tracks and then it's in my first house. I wonder if that has some meaning. Like I remember one time I was headed to a party it's probably 21, maybe between 19 and 21. I saw the full moon and I decided to chase the moon instead of go to this party. I think I might have ended up at the party. But I just drove like a crazy person just towards the moon. I'm nuts. It's okay. Okay, crazy. Okay, crazy. Um... I can be easily influenced by people and environments. Yes, that's why I know I'm very careful with who I spend my time with, where I go. Very true. I am very easily influenced, so now I just um, stick with people who I want to be more like, and I'm mindful in that way, you know what I mean? People can automatically notice what your emotions are. Yeah, I wear my expressions. It's a little difficult to hide them when your emotions are so close to the surface, which they are. But they're usually happy and good emotions. People see you as very compassionate. Your fluid sense of self allows you to adapt to different situations and roles easily. I do adapt to different people. Um, you can navigate various social and emotional landscapes with grace. Uh, your heightened sensitivity can make you vulnerable to emotional ups and downs. Maybe. I definitely don't think of myself as a very highly emotional person, almost like a man. I feel like I'm pretty, but I do sense a lot of emotions. But it's not, it doesn't tend to be very bad. I can get drained by certain people. I gotta be careful with who I hang out with, like I said, because some, you know, enter, I'm very prone to energy vampires. I attract them and, um, yeah. You may need to develop strong boundaries to protect yourself from absorbing negative energies. Ah, literally what I just said. In relationships, you crave a soulful connection, something deep that drives emotional intimacy. Uh, good luck finding that, my friend. That's my problem. You may even put your partner on a pedestal when in, in life and truly think they, oh, and when, okay, live, truly think that they are the whole world. Yes, I do that for sure. The saying I think of is, worship the ground they walk on you put this to truth with someone you love that's so true that's so true my gemini i'm gemini mercury in the fifth house it may be hard to pin you down at times 
You may change opinions quickly based on the latest news you're listening to. I am very open-minded. I try... I'm very open-minded. I don't. I'm fluid in my ways of thinking. Um, that's the only way you're ever going to learn. If you think you know everything, you're closed to learning new things. So yes, I do... I'm fluid with my uh, opinions, and especially if if it's something I don't know anything about, I try not to have any opinions. Things like like gay marriage and whatever, like it is. Of course, I believe in gay marriage, but I don't like to give my opinions on matters have nothing to do with me that I don't know anything about you know what I mean and leave shadow I hope that my dog chewing on her bone is not like the primary sound it's supposed to be a relaxing video and you're just hearing <laughs> anyway sorry I'm sorry oh let's carry on are you asleep yet have I bored you to tears? People love your good humor. You are someone who has an infectious personality. A lot of famous actors have their Mercury in Gemini. I'm not surprised. You have a flair of communicating in a lively and engaging way, whether it's through writing, speaking, or any forms of creative expression. You enjoy entertaining and captivating others. You are likely to use humor and cleverness in your interactions, making you a fun and entertaining presence. You also have a talent for storytelling. Like a lot of people who have, like a lot of people love the way you explain a story, the way you explain certain situations. Make people wanna to listen to you because you create a vivid picture. This is true, when I do hair, I always have a new story always have some drama that I've concocted at. It's usually really silly and over-dramatized, but it's just fun. It's fun and I tell the whole story and for the, <gasps> the gasps, it's so much fun. I seem to just create, I don't hate drama. We're not too, I hate drama and it literally are drama. A lot of crazy things happen in my life and I find humor in them and they always have to do with people, and I love people. I never, I really try not to speak ill of anybody, especially in my stories, no gossip, just fun, just fun. It's one thing, I don't miss dating, but I do miss some fun stories that I would have for my clients and my friends. <laughs> oh, God, okay, oh, just thinking of some embarrassing things that I've done. Anyway, uh, your playful and impulsive nature might lead to inconsistency in communication or a tendency to be easily distracted. Learning to listen and stay engaged in conversations is important. You can easily engage uh, others and create a positive energetic atmosphere. You are charming and flirtatious. Enjoying the playful and exciting aspects of love. <laughs> Don't make me sad now. Don't get me depressed. Don't talk about love, please. <laughs> you seek partners who can match your energy and enthusiasm. I can also say with Mercury in the fifth house, you may have had a number of love affairs. Sorry, I hope that clicked and just wake you up. But your lover must be intellectually interesting or you become bored. Um, you for sure. So let's get this straight. I mean, I guess I've had a number of love affairs, but honestly, I think I've only really loved, love, loved two people. And it's, I've had some fun. Let's not get into that. I want to defend myself. Why do I want to defend myself right now? I've tried a lot of love affairs. No, I haven't. 
No, I wait, 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 wait. No, I haven't. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I can be a prude sometimes. You appreciate partners and friends who are willing to share their thoughts and ideas freely. Of course. Okay. Gemini Venus in the fourth house. You are open to different ideas and perspectives, which allows you to adapt to changing family dynamics or living situations. You are likely to have a diverse and interesting social circle, very true, with friends from different backgrounds and different interests. Oh my gosh, people that I like and that I'm friends with, you could not, they, they would be odd, odd pairs. I seem to get along with all types. Having Gemini Venus tells me that your love for variety and change might make it challenging for you to settle down in one place or commit to a long living, long-term living arrangement. That is true. I literally move every year and I'm trying to stop that. It's not great for the kids. I don't move long distances, but I just, no, I just haven't found that place that feels like home and sometimes I think I never will. I really want to travel and I want to have a second house, or a first house and a second house. But uh, yeah, this is very accurate. Um, you may feel compelled to move, yeah. You bring a light, communicative, communicative, and adaptive energy to your home and family life. You want people to feel welcome of all backgrounds and belief and do not judge any of this. I don't judge anybody. I'm the least judgmental person. I can say that that's something I'm really happy about in this time of my life. I do judge. Mm. I do judge maybe partners and judge people that I, you know, want to have into my inner circle. I guess as I'm getting older, I'm being more careful what I share. But as a whole, like, I love everybody. When I spend time with somebody, I really try to make sure that they know that they're important. And in that moment, they're the person that matters. It's not me making myself look a certain way. I want people to leave my presence feeling better than they did. That's my goal. I'm not always perfect at that, but I want, yeah, people to leave my presence and feel lighter, not heavier. So I don't judge anybody. I'm only with them sometimes for I'm doing their hair, I'm with them for, you know, a small amount of time. And they're important, even if they have ideas that I don't particularly agree with. They're still important. Even if they have bad opinions. Like if they're racist or, I don't know, angry, hateful. What made them like that? They still deserve attention and love. Loving someone else is loving yourself. Hating someone else is hating yourself. We are all important. We're all important. Pisces, Mars, another Pisces, not surprising. In the second house, oh my gosh, am I Pisces in my first and second house? Concerning, I'm concerned. And Cancer, this is a lot of water energy, a lot of fluidity, which I believe. You have a very good earning power and gain all of your success through your own effort and competitiveness. Competitive with self. 
Having Mars in the second house tells me money is very important to you. Uh, money is important to me, but I am beginning to view it differently. I feel that money blocks are lifting from me. Um, I don't want money to have a nice, beautiful car and things to show off for people. I don't want money for appearances. And the more I let go of that desire to show off, I believe more money is going to flow to me. And I want money for one, stability for me and my children, most importantly. And I want to be able to give more to others. I remember when I was just a single mom, I am a single mom, but when I just started, how scary it was, how, how desperate I was, and how I made poor decisions based on fear of not being able to take care of myself and my children. And I want to help other women with that. So one day, I'm hoping that the Lord blesses me more um, and financially and that you're not going to see me driving some fancy car unless, unless it's given to me or something. I'm not going to be spending my money on frivolous, ridiculous, fancy things that don't mean nothing. I really want to pour into other people, invest in people, invest in myself and invest in people. Anyway, I really went on a tangent just then, didn't I? Did I feel like I have to defend myself for wanting money? It's possible, it's possible. I feel like it needed explaining though. It's an important, um, piece of who I am as a person. Uh, you often will have your own side businesses with Mars in your house because you are driven for great success and income. You are efficient about creating new ideas on how to make profit. Your imagination can lead to innovative ways in earning money and managing your resources. You may excel in artistic fields or in professions that allow you to use your creativity. Pisces in this house often amplifies the artistic mind and how creative you can get with making income. Pisces is very creative. Um, you may have an unconventional or imaginative way of dealing with finances and resources. Traditional methods might not appeal to you and you could find success in creative or artistic endeavors. And even creating something new and different, you may be known as impulsive. Having Mars and Pisces lets me know that you shoulder the responsibilities of others at times without any complaint. During your lifetime, you will most likely attract influential people and gain success from these associations. That is literally what I was trying to manifest today. Just a lot of things are, you are who you know. So something really cool happened to me in the past few weeks. Somebody reported my business, which was not cool, <laughs> but the person investigating me was very nice and funny enough I went to a baby shower and I started talking to a woman and I said you know what do you do and she says I am an investigator for the licensing department of South Carolina the state I'm in she was two hours away from home where they you know from where they were investigating me it wasn't like they were it was all in my city Everything was two hours away. My investigator and this random woman that I happened to meet at a baby shower who was a doll. And so she says, I'm an investigator. I said, oh, that's funny. I'm being investigated by the licensing department. And she goes, who's your investigator? And I said, and she goes, oh, he's, he's very nice. 
you are lucky. And I'm actually gonna put in a good word for you. Next time I talk to the person investigating me for not doing my licensing for my hairdressing studio correctly, um, he could have fined me. Instead, he said, we're gonna expedite this to make sure that you're handled and legal as fast as possible. So there's been other situations too, but I have been attracting the right people. God has been putting the right people in my life at the right time. The universe wants to work for you. The universe wants to do things for you. A lot of times you have something in the way. You might know what it is. There might be a relationship that's really toxic that you can't get rid of. And you know deep down when your heart and your brain want two different things. It's really trauma. Your heart is holding all the trauma and wants certain things, thinks it wants certain things. And it's unhealed that the universe or your brain is trying to beep, 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 get rid of that. I promise you, once you get rid of the things that are not good for you, I know how hard it is. It's the hardest thing in life. My dog is drinking water and I apologize. There's often a strong sense of social justice and a desire to contribute to the greater good. People with this ascendant often have a youthful, energetic vibe, regardless of their age. True. They might come across as lively, dynamic, and full of ideas with a twinkle of curiosity in their eyes. You are not to, you're not afraid to go against the grain and may take a rebellious stance. Oh yeah. Freedom is very important to you and you love independence. Yes. You're someone to prefer to, you're someone who prefers to live your life on your own terms and is someone who encourages the ones you love to do the same. All right, big six, Cancer, Pisces, Aquarius, Gemini, Gemini, Overall, I really liked this. I really like this. I think it was pretty accurate. And I hope you sleep well if you're not already sleeping. Thank you for listening to me and my rants. If you made it this long, and if you're sleeping, Good. <laughs>